All right, week seven, problem seven. Consider the mass spectrometer shown schematically in the figure below. The magnitude of the electric field between the plates of the velocity selector is three times 10 to the third. So I'm gonna call that 3000. And the magnetic field in both the velocity selector and the detection chamber has magnitude of 0 0.045 teslas. Calculate the radius of the path for a singly charged ion having a mass of 2 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. Hmm. Okay. So the idea here is we have two portions. We have a portion with electric field and magnetic field, and then we have a only magnetic field. Okay. So I'm going to write out the formula that we use pretty much every time. So we're going to have, hmm, I think I'll go with blue. Everyone likes blue. Maybe there's someone that doesn't. Ah, <laughs> actually, I'm pretty sure people in Ohio don't like blue. My target audience. Hmm, awkward. All right, force equals E Q plus plus. That's a terrible plus. Plus Q V cross B. There we go. All right, so the idea here for the first one is um, there it's got the particles going forward with a specific velocity, not accelerating, which implies <clears throat> that for the first portion, force equals zero. And when the force equals zero, it then is gonna mean that the electric portion, this guy right here, and the magnetic portion, that guy right there, are gonna equal each other. So we're gonna have E Q equals Q V cross B. And they're probably going to be set up exactly so they cancel each other out. So let's look at this guy real quick. So we got our positive charged particle, and it's going to be attracted to the negative side by the force electric and repelled by the um, positive side. There we go. And <clears throat> for the magnet, we're going to have to use the um, right hand rule. So it'll be force equals QV cross B. So V is upward and uh, magnetic field is inward. So it's going to be V cross B. Force is going to be to the left. So the force magnetic is going to be this way. Force, I'm going to call it B. B for magnetic. I don't know why they don't use M. Man, I don't know. It doesn't matter. All right, so the idea is they are exactly opposite of each other. So they oppose each other. Okay? So working with this formula, we then cancel out the Q's, and we're not given velocity, right? Right. Which I think is why this is called a velocity selector. Hmm? Hmm? So the velocity selector is, yep. Which they say the velocity selector is in volts per meter. Hmm. I bet you that's how they do the selecting the velocity is change the voltage. Interesting. Anyway, not important. So these guys are perpendicular, so that's gonna be one. So then I'm gonna say that velocity, I'm gonna still have the little uh, vector thing up there, not because it actually is a vector, but just because um, that way it's obviously not voltage. And then I'm gonna have E over B. And I know this is, you know, putting that little vector up there, technically incorrect. Eh, kind of, sort of. But for this, I'm going to leave it up there. So, I would not recommend doing that on a test unless you're, you know, that confused in life and you need to make sure it's not voltage. All right, so we know that V equals E B. Okay, that sounds good. Then here, we do have acceleration. Specifically, we have acceleration towards the center. So the, as it exits, we're still going to have the same force we had for the magnetic field but we don't have the electric field canceling it out now. So we're gonna get an acceleration towards the middle, and we are gonna determine what that acceleration is. All right, so for the second portion, the EQ equals zero. So all we're left with is force equals mass times acceleration, which equals QVB. And I'm gonna, I'll leave it in the cross product for now. Oop. Okay. 
So now, we know that acceleration here is going to be centripetal acceleration. Oop, oop, there we go, V squared over R. And we know that uh, the velocity and magnetic field are perpendicular. So we can get rid of that cross product. I'm going to make an arrow here, that way I don't, when I start canceling things out, I don't have to do it everywhere, I just do it on this little portion here. The arrow really means that, hey, these things are somehow related, but in no way that you can count wrong on the test. So, V cancels. Um, let's see, what are we even looking for? I don't know, probably the radius? Maybe the radius? What is... Calculate the radius, okay. So we're looking for that R guy right there. So I'm gonna say R equals M, and instead of V, I'm gonna write, as we discovered earlier, E divided by B. E divided by B. That's the MV portion, then we're gonna divide by QB. Q, and instead of, instead of doing that, putting the B over and multiplying it, I'm just going to use it as a square. There we go. Oop. That's a terrible square, but you get the idea. Alright, so now I'm just going to start plugging in numbers. See where this goes. Hopefully somewhere nice and happy. Alright, 2 times 10 to the negative 26th. That's a, that's a small number. 2 times times 10 to the negative 26. All right, magnetic field. Hopefully it's also reasonably small. Nah, it's 3,000. Three times 10 to the third. There we go. Then we got B, which is kind of small. Um, I'm going to rewrite this guy real quick as, so I'm going to rewrite this guy as 4.5 times 10 to the negative second. It's just easier to square when you square things to have them in scientific notation. Alright, so I'm going to have, I'm going to call this 4.5 squared, and then I'm going to call it uh, 10 to the negative second squared which is just going to be 10 to the negative fourth. And then we have Q. Ah, this is where we get the small number. Um, singly charged. So I'm going to call, I don't know, electron. So singly charged, I think they mean one elementary charge. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Let's see if I can do this better. There we go. Good enough. Adequate. All right, now I'm going to do some simplifying. Move over to a purple. Eh, I think I probably could have chosen some red and purple. So this will be negative 23. This guy will go away. Uh, 1923, this will be this kind of negative 4. Negative 4. Ooh, that was strangely convenient. So we have 2.1 times, no, we have 2 times 3, which is 6. We have 4.5 squared and 1.6. 4.5 squared is probably like 20. Alright, so let's do this. 6 divided by quantity, 4.5 squared times 1.6. Oh. Let's see. Yep. Yep. 0.185. That's not too bad. 's like oh, that's, that seems like maybe that big maybe that big 
Yeah. I could see that fitting in like a lab. So. Alright. And that is how you do a mass spectrometer problem, I guess. Yeah, that's not too bad. Alright. Moving on to problem eight.